Well, good evening, everybody. And I will use this nice, neat hammer to call us into session. It is now, I guess, 7.03 to the best of my eyes. And uh, can I ask Grace, can you uh, confirm a quorum, or is that uh, my responsibility? You'll just answer here okay. for the record. Blair Weaver? Yo. Robert Logue? Here. Charles Roberts? Here. Paul Fredericks? Here. Doug Deptouch? Here. Might we all stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We are here, we are here tonight to discuss um, one item of business that's on our official schedule, and that's a, a uh, uh, variance uh, requested by Janet and Bill. Is it Kasami? Chaney. I'm sorry? Think it's Lon Chaney. Chaney. Chaney? Okay. I apologize for the mispronunciation, but thank you so much for uh, being here tonight and giving us the opportunity to hear what's going on. Um, I guess the first act that would be to ask them to present their... Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing. Thank you, Grace. And uh, we'll start with uh, those petitioning for the variance. How's that? Okay. Okay, we're going to start with uh, Guy Burnett. <clears throat> Thank you, committee members. Appreciate your time. My name is Guy Burnett. I'm an architect here in Hullovis. I live at 14702 Cross XD in Hullovis Park Estates, and my office is on Van Mare Road. Um, this is a site plan of the uh, Cheney's lot in Hullovis Ranch Acres. It's a two-acre lot, and the house was built in 1983. I better get my notes. And... Um, the subdivision was, was platted in um, 1973, and there are deed restrictions and the restrictions on the plat. I looked those up before we started this project. The, um, I got it upside down, yeah. The setback on the uh, deed restrictions, and there's a copy in your packet, is 50 feet, and the setback for the front in the plat is 90 feet. I don't know why there's two different ones. And the house is 175 feet back. The, um, behind the house is a wooded area that runs from the rear of the house all the way to the back, except for a, a deck area. And the driveway comes in as shown. This is existing with this loop. And the Cheneys would like to build a detached garage in, in this location. And it is in front of the front building line uh, of the house, of the existing house. There's a couple of reasons. One is it's a really good spot. It's, it's level there. There's a hill that goes up to the back right here and a lot of trees. There's also an overhead electric line that's from the pole right here that runs to the house right here. And so the garage can't be underneath it. It's got to be in front of it or behind it. Um, if, if they move it up here, it's gonna be a lot higher and hard to get in the driveway uh, to there. Plus we have to cut down a lot of trees and here it's off the side and it fits the, the driveway. We tried to design something that would look a lot like the house that's, that's there to, to um, connect it. There's also going to be a connection um, that's gonna be covered. Um, you'll still be able to drive underneath it to here so they can park right there and walk in the back, but um, it's, I, it, I guess it's called a breezeway, a covered breezeway. It, it's not going to be closed in other than posts. Um, I think one of the main reasons why the variance should be granted 
is that when this subdivision was built, there weren't any restrictions about a de detached garage um, being front or behind the house. It, it was allowed. And at one point in Holotus's history, as subdivisions began to start be being built, Holotus decided to make some setbacks for new subdivisions, and they put it in the zoning ordinance. And houses that are new, or subdivisions that are new, when they build new lots, they can be, of course, much smaller than two acres, but they also, the homes, the front setback minimum in Holotus is now 40 feet. And at the same time they passed that, they decided to say that the garage, if it's detached, can't be in front of that 40 foot line. And so I think, you know, that's sort of a rule that was passed for a different kind of circumstances than what exists in this subdivision. So I think it's reasonable. In addition, if you'll, you'll uh, find in there on the desk that Mr. Cheney has provided, there are 10 lots, including this one on Javelin, that w this lot in 200 feet. He has letters of support from all nine of his neighbors and plus himself and none of the four behind him back here responded to our request. But um, so anyway, we have neighborhood support. So we feel like that it's a pretty reasonable request and um, we hope that you'll grant it. Thank you. Thank you. Don and Chris Jones. Good evening. Since I'm normally on the other side of the podium, but um, I thought it was very important to come tonight because when Bill and Janet moved in next door to us, we finally had a real neighbor. They were happy to welcome us into their home. Uh, whenever we had a project that we wanted to do, Bill was right there to step up and say, what can I do? Uh, if you own a chainsaw, you know, that's not something that you loan to somebody very easily. Uh, number one, it's easy to damage it. And number two, if you're not sure about how well they can work it, <laughs> it can damage them. When my chainsaw went out, Bill was right there and said, look, use mine, take it however long you need it. Um, obviously, we're the closest neighbors in terms of the house. Uh, when I walk out, our garage door, I see his house, and I can, I've watched him map out the area where he wanted to put the garage very carefully. Uh, he's very religious about not taking out trees that don't need to be taken out. Uh, and he's very fastidious in what he does. Uh, he makes me crazy whenever we have pickups in terms of um, Brush and stuff. His log pile, his brush piles are neater than my bedroom. <laughs> I mean, everything is stacked perfectly. It's not something he's doing just as a whim. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't had a garage. They've suffered through the weather we had. They had no choice in terms of where to put it because they bought the house second. And um, I just like to say, as a neighbor and as a member of this board, that we should support this request. Any questions for me? So you're directing next door to Yes. Okay. Yep. So you're going to be looking into the back of this building? Yep. Okay. No, no problems with that either. Well, you will, but there are trees there. So yeah, we're, yeah, we have trees between us, so it's not like it's sitting there open. I drove by it pretty quick over there. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Citizens to be heard this evening. What tag number? I'm one, sorry. One 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 two three. Javelin. Javelin. Okay. So I, I thought it was an outpost of mine, but and it's not. So I guess I'm one two three then. Okay. Okay. Just for the record, just for the record, before the applicant comes up here, and then you can ask him questions. Just for the record, we did read. Received the city did receive a letter via mail. Uh, it's at the podium. She her address. There's one lot between her and and the applicant, and she is opposed to to the request. Grace, when you 
Let's say one lot over. Is she one lot over from Mr. Jones or one lot going the other way? She's one lot over. She's at 210. You have a map in your packet, and the ending mm -hmm. number is 210. Yeah, one lot next to us is empty, so it can't be mm -hmm. one lot two, I guess. I'm sorry, sir. Can you? You may come up here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just come up here to communicate? Take it back. Yes, yes, sir. Come on up here, David. Did you receive a letter, sir? I'm sorry. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Well, so basically, means there's no house on that lot. Where, there's a no. The owner of the lot sent the letter. Just for the record, we are required to send the property owners, the registered property owners, notice of this hearing, and that is how this is. That's how I got that. Receive the letter. So you didn't, have not responded prior to your coming here? Today. No, okay. we just received the letter. I thought you'd just show up for it. Mr. Okay. Chairman, could you please ask Ms. Curry's name for me? Which one? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, may I inquire my name's, as to your name? My name is David Morales. And I have the property 11039 Javelin Trail. Can you explain this to me? Right now? now, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you, can you speak first? I was going to say, as you're up here, David, um, and Donnie spoke earlier, the lot that you own, is that, that's not adjacent? That's, no, that's, I, and see what, I thought this was a property that we had, we sold a property on 2-9, and I thought it was those people that were wanting to put it right next, and I was like, well, that's, that's why I'm here. Okay, okay fine. So, so this is not... It's not anywhere close. So, no. Okay, so you're, you're indifferent as to whether or not we make a judgment. No, I just, well, I wanted to see, I just kind of trying to see where they're in reference to 3-9. And y'all are down by the corner where it makes a turn? So if you turn up Javelin and take a right, and then there's you go down before. The sixth house. When you turn on the Javelin Trail, there's a sixth house on the right hand side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just confirm, David, that you are not within the uh, property limit that would have required that you receive a letter, or did you receive a letter? No, I did. I, well, I received a letter. Yes, okay. I did. But you're you are not concerned one way or another as to how the board would take action this evening. Well, I would like to drive by and see exactly where it's being proposed and where the board would want to send it out if you want to show me in reference to it. I'd like to look at that. Well, we can show you in reference, but the reason why they send the letters out ahead of time is so everybody can do oh, okay. due diligence mm -hmm. before this meeting and we come to the meeting to sort out I, everybody's I thoughts as thought. opposed to, yeah, no, that's quite all right. In the hear, I'm sorry. Did I hear correctly that the lady that wrote a letter in that sh there actually is no house on that lot? I was mistaken about the lot. The lot on the other side of us is empty, but this one is the other way. Yeah. Oh, the, the other one? Now, is she Im immediately adjacent to the property requesting the variance? No. No. Two, two to the right. Looking at the house, two, two to the right. Two, two to the right. lots oh, to okay. the right. Okay. Okay. It's on the other side of Donnie, so that is empty. Donnie, okay, mm -hmm. that is empty. That is empty. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. it's, on the other side. it's on the other side of you, so it is empty. Um, I, you are to the left. Sure, please come forward. Is that the applicant? That is you. Okay, and you said there's no. Okay. Donnie's to the left, 
Sometimes you just go to left and down yeah. and it's an empty lot. Okay. Very good. Can we, if there's any other citizens to be heard at this point, can we ask the applicant to come forward and address us with his thoughts or has uh, Mr. Burnett already done that for you? Do you want to speak? Thank you. Um, I apologize if I seem, if, I, if I'm not fully understanding what's happening. I'm uh, mostly deaf and mostly blind. I'm also a Vietnam veteran. I have 100% disability from the, from the VA. I have terminal cancer, unfortunately. So um, every man needs a garage. And don't tell my wife I said that. <laughs> every, every family needs a garage, and I appreciate the board approving the variance um, so we get this built. We're also gonna do a little remodeling later. I need to keep my wife happy. And I uh, appreciate your indulgence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other people to be heard? Can I get a motion from the group to discuss? I make a motion to discuss. Second. Mr. Burnett. Second? Okay, let's open for discussion. How about we start and just go from left to right? That way we keep things a little bit organized. Go ahead, Paul. So uh, what I'm seeing here is, I mean, initially from, from the documentation we had is <coughs> other than the overhead electric, there was no hardship here. But you're telling me that there is a significant grade on the other side of that electric line that would prevent you from putting the garage behind the electric No, line? sir, the, the ground grows up about four feet, five feet, something right at the back of that garage. It, would, it certainly wouldn't prevent anyone, but it would make the, it would make the rise from, from the drive, from the existing drive, the approach to the garage quite, quite a bit steeper. And, and we'd have to cut down a lot of trees back there. But we, you know, we do need to get on the other side of the, of the elect overhead electric. We can't just, because of the garage's walls are 10 feet and the roof, pitch, that height is, is not really achievable without replacing the pole and, and um, we can't just stick a stick on top of the roof and lift it up. Um, so, the, the, you know, the two hardships are the topography and the, and the overhead electric, if, if you want to call those hardships. Okay. Thank you, Salt. Any other questions for me? Not, not, not for now. I'm good for now. Salt? Yeah, just a discussion. I'd also that on the spirit of some of the discussion from um, by Burnett <laughs> yes, sir. earlier, I think that, you know, I kind of have to ask the question of the group. If, if this was a 10-acre parcel, if it was a 12-acre parcel, you know, you can't large enough that we start to question of the ordinance and when is a garage in front of a house a problem and so keeping with the spirit of the original discussion I think that this is a large enough graph that was put in place early enough in the development of our city that myself I don't see a, an issue with placing a building like this especially if it's architecturally pleasing um, it's attached to the house through the walkway that's not legally an attachment in in our terms but it meets the spirit of that intent as well. So um, without a neighbor that's uh, right next to this house uh, voicing a concern, I, I don't really have a problem with that. Bob? Um, <coughs> well, I went out yesterday and met with Mr. Cheney and actually and his two dogs. Fortunately, they don't bite. <laughs> and um, was actually able to put eyes on, you know, where the garage is going to go. Um, where it's going to be built, it's going to be, you really are not going to be able to see it from the street because there's a cleared area, and in front of the garage is nice Texas oaks, small oaks, red oaks, um, red buds, what have you. And the point is, it's going to be camouflaged, so as long as that, all that's going to stay in place, <coughs> I'm assuming it is. Um, I don't really see it becoming an, an eyesore to the, neighbor, to the neighborhood. Um, I also look at the fact that our rules and regulations are set up for, came into being after this subdivision 
this subdivision was built. And I, I don't think that we can really impose those rules onto a subdivision that was in place before the incorporation of the city of Alota. So I think we have to be reasonable about this. Um, I also look at you know the rules and regulations we do have, and the numbers are basically a starting point. And the reason why we're up here is to decide, okay, do we, do we stick with the starting point or do we allow for a variance? And that's really why we're up here. Um, I also look at the fact of what do the neighbors say? If the neighbors are, are against it, then they need to have a really compelling reason as to why they're against it. If they're not against mm -hmm. it, especially the neighbor who's closest to it, Mr. Jones, um, if it doesn't bother him, then I'm not really seeing how it would be a problem for the city. Um, so after going out there, considering everything, I don't really see where, where it would be, I think we would be imposing a hardship by not approving it. Um, I think the land has basically spoken as to where it needs to go. It's a very natural setting. It's close to the house. Um, I don't really have an issue with it. So um, that's, those are my thoughts and feelings. Claire? Uh, I, I can't say that I have a problem with it either. I drove out today and <laughs> met the dogs on both sides. And you know, my you know my impression is the same as yours is that that thing's going to be buried behind the trees, and if the neighbor that has to look at it the most doesn't have an issue, I I just don't see an issue an issue with it myself. Where? Thoughts on this side, your side? John, I think it's a, you know, it's, the plans are nice. I mean, I, I think it's mm -hmm. a, you know, a nice building. It's, if they're going to, like they said, get it architecturally similar to the house, I think it'll fit in nicely. Mm -hmm. And I think we should just capture in the notes that myself definitely maybe have agreed to, in a situation like this where we're looking at a special variant, we set a precedent sometimes and we have to be careful about precedents. And in this case, the property, the setback of the original house was significant mm -hmm. uh, relative to the road, mm -hmm. and the setback of the new garage would be significant compared to the road location. And uh, again, with sight lines being uh, obscure and, and with some of the um, difficulties that are inherent in building on this particular property versus others we'd have to look at in the future, I don't see that we're setting a clear precedent. Every property is a consideration of its own. Mm -hmm. Well, that is why we exist. And I, unfortunately, being a dog lover, didn't have an opportunity to meet the dogs. <laughs> but I did drive by, and I would concur on the fact that from the street, one's not going to know if that building's there or not. And if there is an issue, it's, it's going to be a very, very slight one. Um, the other observation I would make is that uh, there are other properties around that are much closer to the road and people might find offensive depending on, on their architecture. This is set so far back that I, I personally would not see that as an issue. I guess legally speaking, we have uh, two reasons that we could grant a variance tonight and or, and or both. Uh, one is again the topography which would greatly increase your force and, and, and diminish the utility of the garage given the, the slope. The other is the placement of the electric lines, mm -hmm. which would again, uh, uh, having to move those would impose a hardship on you that I think goes beyond anything we uh, would, would see appropriate given the other circumstances in this case. Can we, uh, any, other, any other thoughts? Um, the only other, th other thought I have is we do have this one letter of opposition. Um, and I think, just to be fair, we, we probably need to address that. Um, so my understanding is this is from a neighbor who has property several lots over, not right next door, but doesn't actually have a residence there. That's correct. All right, so that's not a primary residence. Um, and in the letter, the only thing they really say is that they don't support it but they don't really say why. And I have a point that the last sentence is the best possible 
aesthetic appearance. But mm -hmm. but I think she's saying it does not meet that criteria. Um. Then what I would ask is, is a, is a person here tonight who wrote this? She said she couldn't think. Mm. Okay. I, they can write a letter, they can send something via email, or they can, or we encourage them to come in person. Okay, so this is the only information we have. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments, thoughts, gentlemen? At this point, might we go through this list, which is really our, our guideline for uh, being allowed to uh, grant a variance, and I'd like to just run through it. Having heard what we heard, I'd ask each of you to consider whether or not you can comfortably give a yea or a nay to this statement. And maybe the better way to go is to just say, I will read, and if somebody has serious opposition, I'd ask you to speak. Otherwise, we'll assume everybody's in the affirmative. Does that sound fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. There are special circumstances or conditions to the property involved. Are there special circumstances? Everybody would kind of agree to that? Okay. The strict application of the terms of the ordinance will impose upon the applicant unusual and practical difficulties or particular hardship. Everybody agree with that? The little in literal interpretation of the ordinance will deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties of the same district under the ordinance. Agree with that? The proposed variance is in harmony with the ordinance's general purpose and intent. That granting the variance will not merely serve as a convenience to the applicant. The granting of the variance will alleviate some demonstrable and unusual hardship or difficulty or difficulties with the applicant. The granting of the variance will not confer upon the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the ordinance to other similarly situated properties in the same district. The variance is in the public interest and will ensure the public substantial justice to be done. The surrounding property will be properly protected and the remaining regulations are adequate to govern the project. There's no disagreement with any of those 10 statements on the part of the board? At this point, I guess I would make a, a mo ask for a motion. Vote. Motion to close the discussion, I guess. Motion to close the discussion and I take a vote. approved. Can I get a second? Second. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, sir. You have your, your variance. Thank you very much, gentlemen. 736.